talk to me about the game. It, overall, it seems like in a fairly good state. There's teams going up and down the world rankings. Ireland are obviously up, yeah. the, up the top of them at the moment. As we head into uh, an important few months, what have your thoughts been about the Irish team so far this year and, and as they head into the World Cup, which is a bit of a, a hot topic for them when we talk about previous World Cups and how they've done? Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's probably one of the things I need to get over mentally is getting past that quarterfinal stage. And, uh, but, you know, Ireland's just shown in the last, you know, this cycle especially, that they are world class. Um, I think Andy Farrell's is, you know, built on what Joe Smith created. Um, you know, to go to New Zealand last year and play five five tests and come out on the right side of the ledger is, is a real positive from going forward to the World Cup. And what he's also created is real depth, um, which you need to win a World Cup. You need, you know, 31 players that can play in a World Cup final. And he's definitely done that. Do you think the game has changed, even in the past five, six, seven years, that or it was a 15-man game, now it's 21-22. You rarely see a side that you recognise from the start of the game at the end of the game now. Yeah, I think you need... You know, impact off the bench is, is huge. And, you know, you look at you know, New Zealand in, 25, in 2015, you know, look at the, the Barretts the, you know, that the come on at 60, 70 minutes and change the face of a game. So it's a you know, 23-man game now. Um, and as I said earlier, so it's a 31-man game if you're going to win a World Cup. And listen, what do Ireland do to need to get past that quarter-final stage, that mental capacity? Do you think they have that now, or will it still be slightly at the back of their mind? You've been there, you've done it, so what advice would you give them? <laughs> I just, they've just got to, you know, I wouldn't think too much about that. It's, you know, they've got a really difficult pull, you know, in terms of, of you know, South Africa and Scotland and Tonga. Um, you know, let's not get too carried away. Uh, and I'm sure Andy Farrell's doing that. He, he knows uh, what they have to do to get through and worry about the quarterfinal when it comes around. Listen, talk to us about your own boys. New Zealand, where are New Zealand at at the moment? Is there a sense of looking forward to the World Cup or a bit of uh, is there optimism or is it a little bit the other side? Um, well, the nice thing is that not many people are talking about New Zealand, which is a nice change. If we could be under the radar, I think we're doing quite nicely. Um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a huge talent pool in New Zealand. Um, you know, we've got five test matches before our first game on the 8th of September. And, yeah, we're in good shape. I'm not, you know, too worried. Obviously, last year was really disappointing in terms of results. Um, but I think at the end of the season, when, in the Autumn International, I think we turned it round. You know, barring that game uh, at, at Twickenham, where we played really well for sort of 72 minutes and and then ended up drawing the game. Uh, I think they had a really good tour, so they've had a few ups and downs, uh, but at the moment I think we're in good shape. And listen, we've always associated New Zealand with stars like yourself, blockbuster names, Richie McCaw, Jonah Lomu. Anybody else coming through the pipeline that we need to watch out for that's going to burst onto the scene? Well, I wouldn't like to tell you that, no. <laughs> I just, you know, I think, they've, I think uh, you know, Ian Foster, the, the coach of the All Blacks, has got his, his group of players that he's sort of been bringing through, and... And, and hopefully by, by September, and that's one of the nice things, like Ireland, we're all centrally contracted so they can look after the players in terms of the game time they're going to get during Super Rugby. And then we've got five test matches to hopefully build into a, a nice place for that opening game against the French. And listen, with your wealth of knowledge, I have to push you for a winner, so come on, who's your money on? Well, I, well I, you know, Ireland and, and France are the, the favourites. And I, I think uh, home advantage is a big thing. I know it was like when New Zealand in 20, 2011 it meant a lot to us and everyone's sort of been saying that the French won't cope with the pressure. Uh, this French team's very good. Um, so, you know, they're going to be difficult to beat.